it is Jack, back up in this bitch with 10 litres fitness. Um, not a fitness video today though, just making that clear, so uh, if that's what you're here for, sorry, uh, you might want to click away now. Uh, today we're talking about my top tips for university survival. For those of you who didn't know, I am a student, and I'm just coming to you with some of the things that I found to be useful uh, to this point, okay? So, um, without further ado, let's get into it, let's begin this video, giving you these tips. Okay, so the first tip I have for you guys is um, to make friends with people on your course, right? Now, the reason I say on your course and not just make friends in general is going to be because um, obviously you spend a lot of time going to lectures and things um, to do with your course, so having people there that you know and are familiar with, you can go and sit with them, is obviously going to be good to keep you interested in going to lectures, you know, because it makes you feel socially comfortable with the setting and um, it's going to keep you feeling right when things aren't necessarily going your way with the lectures. Um, but further than that also, um, it's really going to help you in an academic sense as well because um, what you'll find is that what I found to be very helpful is I've, got, I've kind of, I, fall, I fell into a very nice friend group um, where we, and the way it works is whenever we have some coursework and things, you know, we'll always, you know, it's very, it's very extremely helpful to um, be able to compare answers with uh, your friends and things. And the way this generally works out is um, because it's not the way, well, the way it works on my course is it's not um, a ranked thing. So it's not, the you know, students aren't competitive with one another really. I mean, we are for banter, but it doesn't really affect the grade that you get based on everyone else's grade. Therefore, there's no reason for people not to help each other out when that's the case, right? So. The way it works is the more people you are friendly with and have trust with on your course, um, when it comes to handing things in, you can go, hey, do you mind if we just compare work and, and have a look at it? And the more people you know, you can do that right from the start then on coursework and things. And the way that's going to work out is that you actually, there's been numerous times when I've been like, with a coursework, I've just gone to answer a question the complete wrong way. You know, I've just been on the complete wrong track and people are like, whoa, no, what are you doing? Have a look, 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 look at what I've done here. You know, you see it's, you know, I've done it completely different, and you're like, oh shit man, that's really, thank thanks a lot for your help, I would have got about two marks out of 30, you know, if I carried on like this, but then, you know, put you on the right track, and, and then times you'll help them out as well, and then, so, in that respect, that you'll strengthen your, your relationship with them as friends, but at the same time, it's also very useful for uh, ensuring your academic success uh, at the end of the day, and I mean, when things get tough as well, what you've got to remember is, you know, if you've got, you know, if you get coursework with three questions and then, you know, you got three of you sitting down in the library to tackle that question, you know. I'm not saying I'd ever um, do such a thing, but why not allocate the questions between the three of you, right? I mean, I'm not advising that at all. Um, I didn't just say that, but, um, you know, food for thought. Okay, so my second tip I'm going to give you is don't burn out. And what I mean by that is treat the effort that you give as as a consumable, as something that can be you know, as a commodity, as something that can be used up as you expend it. And as you start out when you get to uni, you know, you're pumped and super, you know, hyped to do your studying, you know, you do extra reading, you do, you know, keeping up with everything all the time. And and that's not that's not a bad thing. I'm not gonna say that, but what I'm gonna say is you can only go hard for so long before you start to just get pissed off and burn out. You know, you start, when you, to, there's gonna be a point where you sit down to look at the shit and just think, no, no, I can't do this. My brain is, I'm actually sick of looking at the stuff now. And I've actually had it a num numerous times when I've hit that point just as we're heading into an assessment period. And that's, that is the worst time to hit that because you get all lazy and no matter how much you try to sit down and do it, your brain just doesn't want it. You know, it is sick of looking at it. So, the effect is that, because of course, remember, assessment periods are everything here. You know, university assessment periods are can be from a lot of courses can be everything. It is the one point where your you know all your work for the entire year is assessed, you know, particularly if they're high weighted. Therefore, I would recommend you know making sure you. I mean, obviously, try and keep up with the work. You know and try and um, stay on top of things, but what I would say is don't get too stressed out and things if you're not if you're not doing that, but because 
as long as when it comes to that assessment day, when it comes to the day of the exam where it's all tested, as long as you are ready for that, that is the important thing. So I would say conserve effort for, you know, the time periods which are going to mean the most to your final grade. So um, <clears throat> I'm not saying leave it all to the final week and cram like hell, but I'm not saying burn yourself out in the first five, six weeks of, um, of term time and then leave yourself completely frustrated and exhausted when it comes to actually getting ready for the exams. Just something to think about. Okay guys, so the final tip I have for you today is um, work-life balance, right? Achieving that work-life balance. And for me, this essentially comes down to when you finish uni and you're looking back at it, what do you want to have achieved, right? Because yes, of course we go into it, you know, university, hoping to get the best degree we can out of it, right? We want to get that first class. But um, at the same time, if you spent all your time in the library and you've missed up on what could, in my opinion, be the, um, the social peak of your life, right? Um, you're probably not going to feel um, like you've got everything out of it that you could, right? Because the reason I say that it's the social peak of your life, right, it could be, is because when you think about it, you're surrounded by lots of people who are in the same position as you, right? In the same boat, right? Um, they're all around your age, you know. Uh, loads of people on your course are going to have the same interests as you. I mean, they've got societies specifically set up so you can get to know people who um, have the same interests as you. And, you know, you can re make a lot of friends for life, you know, with university and stuff and get to know some cool people. Um, and, you know, of course, there's, there's the other side of things where, um, you know, there's the whole partying side, you know, which is kind of comes along with university, particularly in the first, you know, couple of years, you know. I mean, I'm heading into third year now, so... Um, you know, shit's getting a bit more serious for me. That's not really going to be, um, you know, that's not going to be something I'm going to be doing now. But, um, you know, if you, you know, I've got that done and out of the way in the first couple of years. So, and I'll be honest with you, I could have got better grades than I have done. But at the same time, I've enjoyed, you know, the university experience, you know what I mean? And I think if I got to this point without doing that, I would have felt that like I'd missed out. Even if my grades had been, you know, so much better or whatever. But... No, I mean, like I say, it's how you come to look back on it. Once it's all, once you've all, you know, the dust has settled and you've done and you've got your degree and you're starting on your career and stuff. So, like I say, that balance is very important because at the same time, you don't want to spend all your time dicking around, partying, and then fail university because that is a really an absolutely awful place to be in because at that point, you've paid several years' tuition fees you're in an absolute shit ton of debt and you don't really have anything to show for it and no real leg up on the career ladder which was the reason you paid that money in the first place really you know to get um, your degree and the, that qualification so you can you know, get that leg up on the career ladder and start earning more to pay that back and ultimately lend you in a better position but um, yeah so that's just um, something to think about there really yeah um, Okay, so that's pretty much all I have to say on that today, guys. Um, I hope that has been uh, helpful and interesting. Uh, I've been Jack with, with 10 Leaders Fitness. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Okay, so the first, my first tip for you is going to be... Um, I can't fucking remember. Uh, that we took a fucking.